Before I get to the video at hand, I just wanted to let you guys know that there are new Investigamer t-shirts and hoodies on my Spreadshirt store. The link is in the description down below. I commissioned a really awesome Deviant artist to do this design, and I I am so fucking happy with how it turned out. I'm going to try to buy one of the hoodies myself and wear it in a video soon so you guys can see the quality of the products. Since I don't actually make them, it's all distributed through Spreadshirt, but it will help support the channel if you buy one. and. Honestly, they look really fucking cool, so, you know, you might be interested, just check that out if you are. <laughs> Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first ever episode of The Investigamer Show, the series where I spotlight one awesome indie game every week, talk about gaming news that's going on, and much, much more. I got so tired of doing those fragmented videos, you know, a vlog here, a spotlight there, whenever I had the chance. So now I'm going to do one weekly video culminating everything that I want to talk about that week and one review per week. So that's two videos from The Investigamer every single week, and it starts now. Let's hit it. The Fall is a Kickstarter-funded indie game about an artificial intelligence named Arid, who assumes control of a combat suit after the human pilot is found to be unresponsive. The suit was apparently hurtling towards a strange world in the distant reaches of space, and Arid is unsure what the pilot's mission was and why he was there. She does, however, have one prime directive. Basic Mark 7 system access routed to A-R-I-D A-I. Primary objective, save my pilot. The Fall begins as a side-scrolling exploration game where you examine points of interest in order to solve problems in your environment. However, about 20 minutes later, action elements are introduced that give the game a more rounded appeal. Trading shots with enemy drones, taking cover, vaulting over obstacles, the whole bit. The combat does quicken the pace a bit, but I wouldn't call it quick and punchy. It's more slow and deliberate, much like the rest of the game. The Fall will likely have you scratching your head with its many puzzles, and you may have to turn to the internet to figure out some of the more difficult trials. But when you do manage to overcome one of these obstacles by yourself, the feeling of personal reward will be intoxicating. Honestly though, the puzzles aren't really why I like this game. I like this game because the narrative feels believable. Because wandering through this bizarre world, you'll contemplate what the hell happened here. And the many androids you'll encounter will speak and act exactly as you'd expect them to in reality. That all feels so convincing to me. If she can be refurbished as a domestic droid, it would be wasteful to discard her. That is sensible. Commence. The story also has a three-part structure with a definite behind-the-scenes goal that is accomplished by the end of the game, and sets our character up for the sequel that is currently in development. The tone and atmosphere perfectly conform to the trials and outcome of Arid's journey, and by the end you'll be hungry for what's in store next. I definitely recommend The Fall for anyone who's interested in a puzzle-heavy sci-fi adventure, but only if you've got about five or six hours to kill. It's best when completed in one sitting. That's what I think. As I've discovered from my brief time owning an Xbox One, probably the best thing this console has going for it right now is definitely the controller. I don't know what it is about this thing, but I just love this controller. Maybe it's my big ass hands that need a controller like this, or maybe it's the new D-pad that doesn't suck a thousand dicks like the Xbox 360. Fucking circle, why would you ever think that was a good idea? In any case, this is my preferred controller. I've been using this to play all my PC games since I got an Xbox One, let me tell you. But soon, I'll be able to play those PC games wirelessly. Microsoft is finally releasing a USB receiver for the controller that you can plug into your computer. That is profoundly good news, because I've been using my Android phone charger to plug this thing into my PC, and you can imagine with a two and a half foot cord, it's pretty difficult to lounge in the couch like a video game should be played. In other Microsoft news, 343 Industries has detailed Halo 5's new multiplayer ban system. I'm paraphrasing from a GameSpot article here. <coughs> Players who repeatedly engage in the following actions will receive temporary bans that prevent them from accessing arena multiplayer. Quitting matches, betrayals or team killing, idling, excessive disconnects, 
intentional suicides. Let me ask you, how does a game algorithm determine what is an intentional suicide? Are we prepared to allow a virtual client to make this call? Furthermore, I hate the idea of punishing someone just for being a poor sport or a dick. Is it rude to kill your teammates? Of course it is. But without these assholes to liven up multiplayer, what would video games be like? Actually, I know exactly what they would be like, and it is not a pretty sight. Bullyproof window. Troll safe doors. My safe space. Harmonix, the developer of Rock Band 4, has acknowledged that some of their employees posted favorable reviews of their new game on Amazon. They've since labeled the actions as inappropriate and asked that their employees either remove the reviews or at least admit to being a Harmonix employee. Based on the evidence, I would say that Harmonix had probably no part in this whatsoever, no part in orchestrating it, planning it. In fact, it probably wasn't planned or orchestrated whatsoever in general. It was probably just a few employees doing something that I would say is kind of dumb. And really, how pompous can you be? Did you just go home, pat yourself on the back, and think to yourself, gee, what a great thing we all did. I gotta go post this on Amazon. Everyone needs to know how fucking awesome my creation was. I had a part in this one. This one's great. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret that I don't think I've ever mentioned on Investigamer. I actually play guitar video games. I am a guitar hero addict. I once got 80% on Through the Fire and Flames on Expert. And I have to say, Guitar Hero is superior. And now it's time for the question of the day. If tomorrow a sequel to your favorite game franchise was announced, what would the title be? I didn't have to think about this question hard at all. My game would be Halo 5, the Master Chief isn't being hunted for stupid cliché reasons, and the Flood are actually in the game. That would be awesome! Unfortunately, I have to review the actually releasing Halo 5. Please make me wrong about this game. Please, please make me wrong. I hope that it's not as stupid as some of these trailers make it look. Please leave your answer to today's question in the comment section down below or pose a question for next week's Investigamer Show. For now, I'm off to play more video games and probably get hammered. So take it easy, everybody. I'm the Investigamer. Never trust the crowd, only the investigation.